Good morning, everyone. Russ Barkley back again. And today we're going to be talking about a question that keeps popping up in the replies to this channel as well as my email. And that is whether or not tolerance develops to stimulant medication in ADHD. So to help us out with this, I was able to locate a very nice review of the literature by my friend Kenny Handelman and his colleague Fernando Semilla. And this was published in the journal Brain Sciences. The link to this is over in the thumbnail sketch if you wish to go and have a look at the article yourself. Uh, essentially, people are complaining that if they stay on medication for extended periods of time, they are noticing that the effectiveness of the medication seems to wane or dissipate in some or many cases and they want to know whether this is common or not. Uh, and so to answer that, let's take a look at what Dr. Handelman has found in this review. First of all, what he reports is that the research literature is very thin on this topic. There's not an awful lot out there, and there's a good reason for that. Long-term studies are very expensive to do, and if they're done right, invol uh, involving randomized assignments, uh, an appropriate evaluation of patient complaints about whether their drug remains effective or not. Uh, this is difficult research to do. So it's understandable why we don't see an awful lot of research going out past, oh, say, a few weeks to up to six months, which is generally the range of medication studies. Uh, the other thing is that oftentimes what patients are reporting and when they call it tolerance or ineffectiveness, can be what I called in my clinical practice social tolerance. And that is, once you're on this medication <clears throat> and you derive the benefits from it for an extended period of time, and it doesn't address everything that you think is wrong with your life or that you're attributing to ADHD, you start concluding that the medicine just isn't working as well as you had liked or as well as it used to. Uh, and in those cases, we recommend that you stop the medication for a few days and let's find out whether that's true or not. Usually what we found is if you stop the medication, the ADHD symptoms came back rather dramatically, suggesting that the person was simply developing personal or social tolerance if to the medication. There wasn't real tolerance going on here. Another thing that we found, as did Dr. Handelman in this review, is that Initially, patients experience two benefits or more from the medication. First, they begin to notice the activation that the medication seems to produce in them. They can feel it coming on in the case of adults, particularly with the amphetamines. And so there's a sort of an energizing effect. Uh, the second thing is there's the effect on the ADHD symptoms themselves. Those are not the same thing. And so there could be tolerance developing to this perception of the energizing aspect of medication and not tolerance to the control of the ADHD by the medication. So patients may be confusing one with the other, the loss of that energizing feeling with the loss of efficacy of the medication. Once again, stopping the medication can usually help sort out whether the medicine is remaining effective or not. Now, in the clinical literature, as Dr. Handelman reports, there does appear to be a relatively high rate of intolerance to medication. One study, it's just a clinical study, not a very well-controlled study, it was done back in the 90s, found that about 24 to 25% of patients on stimulant medication appeared to lose the effectiveness or the benefits of the medication over time, and that over time was usually within a matter of weeks to months. However, another study and a review of the literature found that the tolerance rate over a 10-year period of time was less than 3%. So you can see the figures are pretty crazy here, varying from 3 to 25% in terms of reports of tolerance developing in children or adults on these medications. Um, so uh, again, all we can say is that it looks like some people might develop true tolerance to the medication, but it is not a widespread phenomena in most people 
on long-term medication use. Indeed, Dr. Handelman reviewed several meta-analyses of studies that went on for up to a half a year or more, about uh, 28 to 30 weeks, roughly. And both meta-analyses found that there was no reports of tolerance that were statistically significant across these various studies. Now, you might say, well, the studies just didn't go on long enough to detect tolerance past the half-year mark. Yes, but if we're talking about real tolerance in the brain to these medications, typically it develops early rather than late. That is, the brain changes that are supposedly taking place that are accounting for this loss of e efficacy, uh, and there are some me mechanisms in the brain that might do that, uh, that we should be seeing that early, not post six months. Uh, so again, it's difficult to say with any certainty or definitiveness here about tolerance, how many people develop it, at what time point do they develop it. There clearly is some tolerance going on here among some people, but the rate appears to be below that of the general belief that it's widespread. It isn't. It's about 3 to 24 percent. And as I said, some of these reports of tolerance may not be true physiological brain readjustment creating the tolerance, but a tolerance to the social and cognitive benefits of the medication where the person perceives that it isn't working when in fact it actually is working. Now let's also keep in mind that loss of effectiveness of medication can occur if you put on weight. These drugs are not uh, going to work as well where your weight is changing because many of them are prescribed based on body weight. And that makes sense, of course. The medication goes to the entire body, not just to the brain. What it's doing in the rest of the body isn't beneficial. What it's doing in the brain is. So if you put on weight, there is more drug going elsewhere than to your brain necessarily. And we see this in children as they grow up and get taller and put on weight where the medication has to be adjusted. But that's not tolerance. That simply has to do with changing weight that is dissipating some of the benefits, necessitating increasing doses or switching to another medication uh, in order to deal with that readjustment. So again, at this point, we can conclude it's not clear that there is true tolerance developing to the medication. There are reports of tolerance in some research papers. It may be as high as 25%. It may be relatively low, depending upon the population studied and the medication that's being studied. So we just don't know. But you know, at the end of the day, you as an individual don't really care about these group studies that are averaging all these findings together. You just care about one person. And all I can say is, it's, yes, it's possible Then in your case, you might develop some tolerance to the medication requiring an increase in dose or a change to a different medication. The studies do suggest that people who were taking very high doses of medication were the ones most likely to report that they were developing tolerance to the medication. Those in the more average range of doses didn't seem to be reporting it that much. So there you have it. That's the status of our science. There might be some tolerance going on out there. It's not clear how much it is. It can be dealt with by dose adjustments or changing medication, but clearly more research is called for on this question. So thanks for asking me about this topic. I hope you found this review informative. Uh, if so, please click subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And again, as I always say, if you like the information on the channel, please recommend the channel to others. Hope you're enjoying the holidays, everybody. I certainly am eating and drinking far more than I should, but January will be here shortly and I'll be on my diet yet again. After all, January seems to have very little purpose other than losing the weight you put on over the holidays. Ha ha. So thanks everybody for joining me and be well.